Hello and welcome to Unit PRW 110, Professional Contexts, Session 2, Writing for Children and Characterisation. Congratulations, you have chosen a unit that shows you have a passion for writing for children and after Session 1 you should have a good understanding of the age, stage and height you would like to write for. I am sure the time you spent in the bookshops in Assignment 1 has made you very aware of the range of books available to children and teenagers and the various ways they are catalogued, usually in line with the English school grading system. The second session will take you into the world of character, for without character there is no story and to children character is of extreme importance. Children take no prisoners and if your character is not believable and consistent, the story will not interest them and it is unlikely to work way before you even get to its intended reader. Having listened to the YouTube links, you should now be ready to create your characters. But first, a few words about character. Your character will need to fit into the genre you have chosen to write in. As you are developing your characters, think about this genre. Ella in Shirley Hughes' Ella's Big Chance would not work well in either the humour yet realism of Babette Cole's Mummy Laid an Egg, or indeed in The Adventure of Max in Maurice Sendak's Where the Wild Things Are. For this reason it is important to identify the genre in which you wish to write. However, there is nothing to stop certain genres overlapping, realism and adventure, humour and adventure, fantasy and adventure all can and do overlap. Look at some of the following books to help you. Fantasy. We have Wolves in the Walls by Neil Gaiman. Where the Wild Things Are by Maurice Sendak. And Pumpkin Soup by Helen Cooper. Within the adventure category, Where the Wild Things Are is there again. We have the Night Pirates also. And in realism, again, Where the Wild Things Are, this book stretches through different areas of, of categories. There's also Grandpa, The Very Hungry Caterpillar, The Whale Song, The Sad Book, The Big Big Sea, After the Storm, Private Peaceful, Junk, all books in the genre of realism. Humour, Mummy Laid an Egg. This is all also an educational or instructional book, as is The Whisperer. And then we get Fairy Tales, where Ella's Big Chance, A Transfiguration of Cinderella, is seen again. You will notice that books such as Where the Wild Things Are fall into a number of genres in the children's market. I ask you, is one of the reasons for this because of the superb character Sendak has created in Max? It is characters that interest us most when we read fiction. We come to love and or hate them, laugh at or with them, cry at and empathise with them. They are endearing, charming, abhorrent, enjoyable, strange, creepy, curious, good, bad, evil, cute, happy, sad, indifferent, objectionable, domineering, spotty, freckle, pretty, pretty useless, silly, funny, athletic, thin, fat, snooty, robotic. They can be machines or animals. The list is endless. But characters are never bland. This is why it is a character that interests us most when we read fiction. Everything else is just there for support in that character's development. Think about your favourite story and take out the main characters. What is left? It may be set in fantastic landscape, but can that hold the story and plot without the characters? 99.99% of the time, I think not. The exception being alphabet, counting, colouring books for very, very young children and non-fiction that might describe places, people, processes and events. But we are not talking about that genre here. We are looking at fiction for children. So, what do you want your character to be? A character has to be someone of interest. A character needs to be someone you as a writer can take forward. Bring it to the fore and allow it to stand in the spotlight. A character will develop with the story, remembering that the character will never be the same at the end of the story. He, she, or it will have changed forever. There is no going back. Is your character strong enough to carry the story? 
We have to bring our characters to life. We need to give them a name that reflects their personality. You could create a handle for your main character. Perhaps they love to chew gum or wear purple socks or carry a cuddly. You must let your character speak. Maybe give them a distinctive way of speaking or a catchphrase they always use. But always be careful when using dialects and accents. Create a character maybe with a mannerism that will allow the reader to identify with him. Cracking his knuckles, twisting his hair, chewing her nails. Be aware of the name game. In almost all cases, make sure that your character's names are easy to pronounce and not too exotic. Vary those names. Make sure that you vary your character's names so that the reader doesn't confuse them. Using the names Kathy, Cassie and Katie, or Jack, Jack, Jake and Jackie, might make it difficult for the reader to distinguish between those names. Make your reader care. Make sure your character is sympathetic. The reader needs to care about them enough to keep reading the story. Readers generally don't like whiny, miserable characters. Even the antagonist, the baddie, shouldn't be so. In building your character, you must really, really know your character like they are your oldest, best friend. You should be able to describe your character, give them a name, their sex or gender. This may well be through their name or through a picture, if in a picture book. What's their age? What are their physical attributes? Their hair, their eye and skin colour, their frame and build. How do they like to dress or how do their parents want them to dress? What are their dreams, aspirations and ambitions? Who are their family? Where do they live, work, play, go to school? What is their emotional character? Are they generally happy, volatile, sunny, thoughtful, temperamental, withdrawn, angry, violent or funny? We will return to this list later, but first let's do a characterization exercise. This is characterization exercise one. I'm going to describe two characters to you. Try and visualise them in your mind, or if you want to, try and draw them as I describe them. Your drawing ability is not seen by anyone, so don't be shy. Character 1. I'm old and grey and ugly. My large, long nose has a bright red pimple upon the end. I wear a large black cloak to match my hat. My clothes are tattered and torn, like my long, beautiful hair, now battered and shorn. You might want to pause the podcast here to give you time to complete this exercise. Character 2. I'm red and very, very large. I have a beard of red whiskers. Eyes yellow and scary frighten many. I try to breathe fire, but often it is only steam. I have the horns of an antelope and the tongue of a snake. Humans are always good to eat. Again, pause the podcast here if you want more time. So, how did you get on? If you'd like to see who those characters really are, have a look at Julia Donison's story, Room on the Broom. You have looked at what character is and tried to visualise characters from someone else's writing. But what about your characters? How do we distinguish between them? First of all, we have the protagonist, the hero. Think about Max in Where the Wild Things Are, Percy in the Percy the Park Keeper series, Ella in Shirley Hughes' Ella the Big, Ella's Big Chance, the little mouse in The Gruffalo, and Hannah in The Gorilla. They should be imperfect, though. All these imperfections should not be too exaggerated, that the hero becomes untrue or disliked by your reader. Don't make the hero too good to be true. They need flaws of some kind to be believable, and the reader can then relate to them. Give them a reason for being the hero. Why does a character do what she, he or it does? Motivation is essential to the main character's development. They want something, but why? And why the urgency? It is your job to tell the reader this. Their motivation has to make them worthy. Then there is shared protagonism. This can be equally shared or unequal. 
it can be the side sidekick. Think about Hermione and Ron in Harry Potter. This may be an equal protagonism though. It is important to define their personality traits, but not necessarily as thoroughly developed as the main characters, unless they are an equal protagonist. You must decide on how equal shared protagonism will be. Again, think about Harry, Ron and Hermione in the Harry Potter books, and this should give you a sense of equal and unequal protagonism. Young readers need to recognise the mind characters and the roles they play quickly and easily, otherwise they become confused. Do this by giving them a certain trait. Again, chewing gum, blowing bubbles, whatever. This helps orientate the young reader to the character and their role in the story. Characters with familiarity, for instance doctors who wear white, a chef with a chef's hat, a builder with a coloured hard hat, are all good things for young children. OK, what about transferred protagonism? Here the hero passes their baton to someone else by one means or another. Father to son, mother to daughter. It could be generational or aspirational. A dancer to a dancer. A star footballer may be injured and the substitute becomes the hero. Or the general or captain who is shot and another takes charge to lead the battalion to victory. It could be the lead part in a musical who lose their voice and the understudy then delivers to rapturous applause. Then there is the wounded hero. This is the protagonist that is rendered vulnerable in some way. A character who achieves their goal whilst battling illness, or who is terminally ill but still achieves. A character who triumphs against the odds, often from a, an excluded or stigmatised outsider to an acknowledged beloved insider. Or the character's story which is often very affecting or inspirational. Think about the stories of writer-artist Christy Brown or teacher and campaigner Helen Keller. And then there is the one everyone loves to hate, often through whom the pivotal elements of the story depend, the antagonist. This is the baddie or the evil one. They often have the opposite features to the hero. Their physical appearance can often be distorted in some way to make them appear bad. Sometimes they unconsciously strive to be like the hero, but it doesn't work for them. The antagonist can also have bad or evil sidekicks. In books for pre-teenagers and teenagers themselves, the characters can sometimes be more difficult to categorise simply because there are often more of them and various other devices such as subplots, twists and turns, flashbacks, etc. are being used. Have a look at two very good examples for early teenagers. Michael Mapurgo's use of time and character in Private Peaceful is an excellent example. For the older teenager, Melvin Burgess's junk involves complex characters, different places and situations, and flashbacks that surround and influence the central character. In creating your character, therefore, give them personality. Make your reader care about them. Give them a reason for doing what they do. What is the link between them and the other characters in the story? In conveying character, it is also important to consider viewpoint and perspective. Whose viewpoint are we telling the story from? The main or the subsidiary characters? The narrator? Therefore, are we using first person viewpoint, I, second person viewpoint, you, third person viewpoint, where the writer is the outside observer, or limited third person viewpoint, creating the story and focusing on the main character's limited point of view, where you as the writer can see directly through that character's eyes. Finally, omniscient viewpoint, where the narrator, the narrator who provides a voice for telling the story, has nothing at stake in it. If you are unsure about viewpoint and perspective, familiarise yourself with them first by reading a number of books for children. This will help you understand the complexities of both devices from point of view of character, reader and you as writer, much as in the same way any novelist would do. Now, let us create some characters. 
You might want to use the following exercises to develop characters you are already working with or have in mind. You might like to try this exercise now, in which case you will need a pencil and paper, or you might just listen and try it later. I said I would return to the list we looked at earlier. What is the most effective way to create a believable character? Well, this is really getting to know your character and then getting to know them further by creating unique traits and characteristics. You might like to pause the podcast after each item in the list I have to think about your character. You are creating this character and building up particular characteristics which make them unique. So first of all, give your character a name. What is their gender? What are their physical characteristics? What colour is their hair or their eyes? What frame or size are they? Do they have freckles or scars? Think about Harry Potter again. That scar on his face was a major characteristic and intrinsic to J.K. Rowling's stories. What age are they? What is their background? Their education? Where were they born? Or where did they grow up? Who are their friends? How do they like to dress? What are their dreams and ambitions? Who are their family and their relations? What pets do they have? What is your character's emotional temperament? Are they happy, withdrawn, volatile, funny, temperamental? What four emotions dominate your character? How does she, he or it show their reaction to these emotions? Name three things your character is good at. Name three things your character is not good at. Where does your main character live? What are the details of their house, their room, their own special place? Now you can develop this by asking yourself, what if? What if your main character had to move to a new town or school? How would they react? What if your character lived in a very remote location? What if your main character had supernatural abilities? What if? There are so many. All the way through your character exercises, in building your characters and developing the story with them, you should be asking, what if? It is at the what if stage that your story may go in a direction you never anticipated. If you have found this difficult, don't worry, there are more exercises. And if you found getting into your character's head easy, try now to extend that character by writing a letter from your main character to you, to you perhaps in the sense of a pen pal, or interviewing your main character, asking them about their motivation, their goals, their likes and dislikes. You could write diary entries in your character's voice. You could make a school report, a card, a report card for your main character. You might write out the main character's daily or weekly schedule. You might write a description of one character from another character's viewpoint. Or, finally, you can make lists of your character's favourite things. Characters are the essence of our stories. They can be anything we want them to be and do anything we want them to. Just remember to make them right for your audience. A four-year-old will generally like to read about six-year-olds and 12 to 13-year-olds about 15 to 16 year olds. Always aim for your characters to be two or three years older than the anticipated age, stage or height of your reader or audience. It's difficult. Matching maturity of story, character, situation and reader takes determination, perseverance and much courage. You are now ready to tackle assignment two and then immerse your characters into assignment three. 
I look forward to reading your work and hope that some of you will choose to develop writing for children later in the course. Good luck.